Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. Last week we looked at that cool riff from Whole Lotta Love by Led Zeppelin, and since then I've got asked loads of questions about how to get started with pick playing. So today, that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at some basic tips on how to get started, and five riffs that should help ease you into the technique. Remember, you can access the tab and backing tracks for this lesson by visiting TalkingBass.net, so just follow the link in the info below, and while you're there, check out the lesson map where you'll find hundreds more lessons just like this one. You can also sign up for the free membership and access tons of free practice resources and ebooks. so go check it out. Okay, so first of all, here we have a pick. There's a whole bunch of different styles and thicknesses. This is a fairly light Dunlop pick, but I do have some heavier Alice picks as well. And it's just worth trying loads of different ones just to find the one that feels right for you. In terms of holding the pick, you generally want to hold it, obviously, between the thumb and the first finger. And there's two main ways of doing this, and I'm just going to call them a loose and tight grip, okay? So first of all, we'll look at the tighter grip. So you want to hold, uh, you want to clench your fist, a very, very light fist, bending the knuckles at this middle joint here, not at the base here. So I've kind of got this kind of thing going on, and the thumb is going to be coming alongside to, uh, to touch the index finger. Then you want to place the pick there in between the thumb and the first finger, obviously, and the pick's going to be coming out at a bit of a right angle from the thumb. And you don't want much of the pick sticking out. It's, you know, there's only a small amount of it there. So we've got this very, very loose kind of fist there. And that's a good grip for playing faster stuff and certainly more rock and metal orientated stuff and definitely for palm muting. Okay, so it's a, it's a little bit of a tighter grip. Then, for the looser grip that you would use a lot more for general playing and certainly for playing chords, you can just loosen off those fingers a bit so these aren't curled over and we're not curling over that first finger so much. And then just holding it a little bit looser. Okay, so... Okay, but they're both very, very similar. It's just that with one, with the tighter grip, the fingers are more curled over, okay? So that's two different ways of just uh, of, of holding the pick. But, you know, you'll find your own way. This, this is not set in stone at all. It's just that I find that going between those two, depending on what I'm playing, you know, I'll just use one or the other, like I said, depending on context. In terms of positioning of the hand on the bass, you know, you can play anywhere along the string. That's all determined by the tone that you're looking for. So back here at the bridge, that's going to sound a lot tighter. And as you come further forward, you're going to get a much rounder sound, a lot more bottom end. Okay, so very, very similar. In fact, exactly the same as when you're finger picking. That's all going to be determined by the tone you want. Um, I generally tend to have a go-to position of around the bridge. So. I like to stick here and that's that helps for when I'm going to be going for palm muting. So the hand there, I've got it pretty much rested up against the against the bridge there and then the arm, the wrist is just anchored very lightly against the uh, against the body. And you want to have a very relaxed hand and arm. You want to relax everything in there. Obviously, don't relax too much, you'll drop the pick, but uh, you want it to be quite relaxed. So you can see there I've got that hand just roughly around the bridge, and I'm not keeping the hand anchored to the bridge while I'm doing that. I can actually move it up and, you know, and off. But uh, just when I'm relaxed there, it's just sat there. So that's one of the positions to go for. Obviously, if you want a, a more kind of boomy rounder tone, you're going to be hanging around closer to the neck. So as a simple exercise, let's just try playing an open E string. And I'm just going to play down strokes. We'll play straight 16th, so it's 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a, and that would sound like this. 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a. So like I said, very relaxed arm there, and very relaxed hand, and you know, a, a lot of this is coming from the wrist, but I am putting a bit of the arm in there. So you want to try getting some accents in there as well. So try accenting on each beat, okay? And that will help with a lot of the stuff that's coming up. So when you accent on each beat, you know that you're going to be playing in groups of four, okay? So that'll help with uh, knowing the number of notes that you're playing later on and where you are in the beat uh, or in the bar. So we have... 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. 
Okay, so I'm accenting one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, now try accenting on every two notes. So we're going to be on one and the and. Okay, so we're accenting eighth notes. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, so we know we're playing groups of two there. So groups of four, one E and a, two E and a, three E. Now twos. Okay? Now let's try alternate picking. So we're going to be playing downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke. So downstroke being obviously down towards the floor, and then upstroke obviously back up. Okay? So. As I said before, you want to relax the uh, the hand and the arm, but you want to use a bit of the arm in there. So think of it as actually strumming the string rather than picking the string, because you can get very, very when you're thinking picking, you start you know being being very wrist and thummy. Okay, so when you think strum, you're going to get more of the arm in there. Okay, so you don't obviously want to be you know hammering away with the arm like this, but I'm just using the arm there to get a bit more beef in there. Okay. Now let's try the A string. Now this might be a little trickier because we've got the strings above and the string below, so you need to be a little bit more accurate. Okay, so and you can see there I'm using this left hand to mute the uh, D and G string, and I'm using the thumb there to mute the A string, just in case we get any residual vibrations. Okay, so again try with the accents uh, on each beat. One, two, three, four. And then on each eighth note, so one e and a, two e and a. Okay, and when you play the down strokes, try to think of them as playing down. Okay, so into the bass. So when I pick down, I've got that action moving in towards the bass because it's you know you could theoretically pick out away from the body like this. So when you're playing the up stroke, you're actually coming back in. No, we're playing into the body, or the pickup, or whatever, with the downstrokes, okay? And you'll feel there that uh, the downstroke is a little bit more wrist orientated and then, you know, more arm orientated on the upstroke. Now let's just try the D string as well, so onto the D string. And finally the G string. Okay, so like I said, it's more of a strumming action than it is uh, a picking action. And I'm actually getting quite a bit of the arm in there. I'm really quite a bit of movement. Obviously, when we build up speed, that movement will uh, be reduced, but just to begin with, we do have a little bit more movement with the arm. Okay, so that's the basic technique. Now I'm going to work through five basic riffs, each one concentrating on a dis uh, different aspect of the picking. So the tab and the tracks are all there to download from TalkingBass.net, so just follow the link in the info below. And the first riff sounds like this. So this riff is just an expansion of the previous exercise where we're just playing straight 16th notes in there. So the first note in there is a G, third fret of the E string. We play that for a full bar. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Then we move to B flat, first, fret, uh, first fret of the A string. For two beats, one E and a, two E and a. Then we've got C, third fret of the A string for a beat. And then we move down to F and F sharp for a beat each. 
we've got two notes on each of those. And that's it. So G, B flat, C, F, F sharp, and back to G. Okay, so that's the whole thing. Now, the, uh, well, the big tip that I can give you for playing this is accent. So accent on each of the beats. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a. Then when we get down to the F and the F sharp, accent on each of the notes. So we've got two uh, notes for each one. So accent, accent, and then we're back. So very slowly, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Okay, so those accents will help with uh, keeping track of where you are in the bar, and um, you'll you'll just find it actually helps with the actual motion of the picking. So it'll probably help with your coordination a little. So that's the riff. So you just want to try round and round on that. And really focus on the upstrokes, you know, that you're getting those nice and consistent. And remember that I am using a little bit of a strumming action with this. Not Obviously not strumming across the strings, but, you know, I am thinking strum. And um, with this hand, with the left hand, very much like slapping. You know, picking is very much like slapping in terms of the fact that, you know, we don't have the thumb to mute a lot of the lower strings like we do with finger picking. With you know, just as with slapping, this uh, fretting hand's got to do a lot of the work. So I'm actually starting in my home position. So remember what I've said in previous lessons about a home position? You know, you've got your hand there, you know, just muting those strings, just in position, and then we just hold down the uh, G there with the fourth finger, with the pinky, and that keeps everything nice and covered on the A, D, and G strings. So these other fingers are there held across the strings. Then when we move to the to the B flat, the second and third finger there are kind of coming across to uh, cover the E string, so that's not uh, making any any noise. And it just keeps everything nice and quiet, you know, a nice clean technique. So very minimal movement in the fretting hand. So begin really slowly with that, keeping everything nice and consistent, you want good time with it, and then try with the backing track, which again, sounds like this. For riff number two, we're concentrating a little on the upstroke. So here's the riff. So on the face of it, this is a really simple riff, but it does focus our attention a little on the upstroke and accenting that because we finish each of, each of the phrases on an upstroke. So in terms of the notes, we've got A, fifth fret of the E string. So just four notes on there. And we finish on the upstroke. So it's down, up, down, up, okay? Then we move to the G, third fret of the E string and play. So we've got two sets of two notes. Again, each one obviously finishes on an upstroke. So then exactly the same thing on the A string. So D fifth fret, and then C third fret. Okay, and that's it. Okay, so we have. So when you come back up on the upstroke, remember. We're not accenting it necessarily, but it does make you think about it. You know, the fact that you're coming up and you're using a bit more of the arm in there. So, very slowly.
Okay, and remember what I said earlier about the down, you know, down into the body with the down stroke, with the accent. And it's kind of a pull action with the, uh, with the upstroke, okay? So again, just start slowly, gradually build up speed, and then you can play with the track. Riff number three concentrates on double notes and sounds like this. So in terms of the notes, we're in the key of G and we start on a G, third fret of the E string. And we play that twice. And we play a repetition or two notes for every note in the riff. So G, then we move on to the A string and have B, C, C sharp, D. Okay, second, third, fourth, and fifth fret. Then exactly the same pattern up on the D string, E, F, F sharp, G. So second, third, fourth, fifth fret. Okay, then we move back down to the A string, exactly the same set of notes, B, C, C sharp, D, second, third, fourth, fifth frets. Then finally, we move down to the open E string, and we have E, F, F sharp, G. Open string, first fret, second fret, and then we're back to the G, back to the top of the riff. So, very slowly. So very simple pattern and in terms of the uh, fretting hand there, I'm just using a one finger per fret uh, system. So I'm starting on the second finger for the G and then it's just first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, okay? So the key to this riff is the accents really. You know, how I said to accent each of the, uh, each of the down strokes. So we've got two notes each and we just accent and then upstroke and then accent, upstroke, accent, upstroke, okay? You don't have to overdo the accent, I'm not meaning really, you know, slam it out there. It's just that we're really thinking of the hit as we go down. And remember what I said about using the arm, you kind of pulling a little with the, uh, with the upstroke. And another uh, little tip is that when I'm moving across, I'm actually using the heel of the uh, picking hand a little to actually mute the lower strings as I move up because it's hard to mute with this hand because we're using all those fingers for the actual notes. So there when I move onto the A string, you can see the, the heel of this hand or the palm of this hand is, is covering the E string. And then I just move it across a little bit more to cover the E and A string. Okay, and you can see there I'm pushing down with every down stroke and then pulling with each upstroke. Okay. As you build up speed with that, that's when you'll realize where the use of the arm comes into play. And like I said before, it's not like a massive, you know, like we're strumming like this. It's just a little bit more movement from the arm, a little bit more pull with that arm. Okay, just to, just to help with all of that, okay? As always, start out really slow, concentrate on good time and technique, and then build up speed. Okay, and then you can try with the track. Next 
Next, for riff number four, we're looking at octaves. So the riff sounds like this. <laughs> Octave patterns are really good for building up your string skipping and your sense of distance in terms of crossing the strings. So, first of all, let's just try a simple octave. So, just a D octave. Fifth fret A string, seventh fret G string. So, here I'm playing with a downstroke for the uh, A string and then an upstroke for the G string. And you can hear there that I'm playing a held note for the uh, for the A string, and then I'm cutting it short staccato for the uh, for the G string. I'm starting in my home position, you know where we're holding the uh, fingers lightly against the strings. I've got the first finger there over the A string. I've got the uh, fourth finger there over the G string, and then these two fingers in the middle, the second and third finger, are kind of coming across to cover the E string. So then when I play for the lower notes of the octave, these fingers are still, well that second finger there, that's still kind of covering the E string to keep it quiet. Then when I play the upper octave there, I'm really using a stabbing motion with that pinky to get that short note, okay? So just try that. And it'll take a, get, uh, a little bit of getting used to with the, uh, the movement of the downstroke A string and, you know, upstroke G string. You really have to concentrate on that upstroke. Okay? Then, for the riff, we've just got a bar of that D, then down to the C, so 3rd fret A string, 5th fret G string. Then we move down to the... Um, to the G, so we've got 3rd fret uh, E string and then 5th fret D string. Then we've got the A, 5th fret E string and 7th fret D string. Then C, C sharp, D, so 3rd fret, 4th fret A string, back up to the D. And that's it, okay? So remember, all of this is transcribed in the lesson material. Just follow that link in the info below. So, we've got four on each. Then two on the A, C, C sharp. Okay, start out slow again, build up speed, then play with the track. Finally, for riff number five, we're going to be looking at some palm muting, and the riff sounds like this. So, let's have a look at palm muting. So what we're going to do is use the heel of this hand, the, uh, the picking hand there, to lightly rest against the strings. And here I'm just playing on the E string, so I'm only applying the palm muting to the E string. So, there around the bridge, I've just placed that heel of the, uh, of the palm there, and then I just pick, and you can hear that muted tone. So, it'll take a little bit of getting used to because depending on the amount of pressure you apply, you know, that'll determine how muted it sounds. So, and then just try moving across, across the strings there, just to get used to the position of the hand. Then you can try the riff. So, we begin the riff with this crossing of the strings. Okay, so we've got A, E, G, A. So, fifth fret uh, E string, seventh fret A string, fifth fret, D string and then 7th fret D string. And you'll have to get used to kind of moving the hand, the, this, uh, this muting pad of the hand across the strings there as you go. Okay, 
Okay, so that's the first part. And then we move down to the G and the A, third fret, fifth fret of the E string. Okay, then we move across onto the A string and we have this. So we have a ghost note, so I'm in home position for this. So there's the ghost note, so. And then we play D to C, fifth fret, third fret, A string. Two notes on the D, one note on the C, so ghost note, and then the D and then the C, so. So we've got. Okay, so that's the first part. Then we have the same thing again. And then, then we have F sharp to G on the E string. So that's second fret to third fret. So, and then we just leave the rest of that bar blank. So the whole thing. Oops, I missed out the ghost note, so. Okay, three, four. Okay, so, start out really slow like that, then build up speed. And then you can try with the track. Okay, so that's a few tips on getting started with picking. Remember to like this video if it's helped and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all the weekly Friday lesson releases. Also remember to visit TalkingBass.net where you can get, uh, download the tab and the sheet music and the backing tracks for uh, this lesson. And while you're there, check out the lesson map where you'll find hundreds more bass lessons like this one. And you'll be able to subscribe to the free membership where you'll find lots and lots of different practice resources and eBooks. Okay, I'll see you next week. Thank you.